time. Is everyone ready to go? Okay. Uh, can I introduce you to my right, uh, and probably needs no introduction, but uh, Assistant Commissioner Mike Conlon, who is in charge of State Crime Operations Command, which of course includes the uh, Hydra, Outlaw Motorcycle Gang Task Force. And to my left, Assistant Commissioner Graham Rinders, who is in charge of the South East Region, which of course takes in the, the Gold Coast uh, area. Um, well, we are now in a position to release to you uh, five images of the person we believe uh, responsible for the shooting yesterday at the shopping centre at Rabina. You will notice when you see those images uh, that uh, two of them are of a person wearing um, a whitish pattern coloured t-shirt. Three of the images are of a person wearing a black hooded type jumper. Um, it, we believe it's one and the same person and that at some stage at yesterday at Rabina there was a change of clothing but you'll see those images shortly. Um, we uh, yesterday commented uh, and, and gave this description uh, that the person was 20 to 30 years of age, of muscular build, with full arm tattoos and facial tattoos. We still believe that to be correct. Uh, and at the time of the actual shooting, uh, we believe he was dressed in the clothing where he was wearing the dark coloured uh, hooded type jumper not the white T-shirt, uh, and also wearing a black baseball cap. Uh, there was discussion yesterday as well uh, that the person was pot the shooter, the offender, uh, was possibly of Pacific Islander appearance. As the result of our ongoing inquiries, whilst we can't rule that out, it is also now possible that the person is of Middle Eastern appearance. So we want to keep a really open mind on that, uh, and that possibility is, is definitely present of the person being a Middle Eastern appearance. We have not as yet identified this person and that aspect is critical to our investigations. The male person who was shot, who, uh, as we mentioned yesterday, has association with uh, outlaw motorcycle gang activity, has not been cooperative with us. Uh, we believe that that person is likely to be discharged from hospital at any time and may even have been discharged as we speak. That appeared to be imminent. I reaffirm that the woman who was shot was a completely innocent uh, victim and uh, bystander and had, had no connection at all to the male person who was shot. Uh, she is still in hospital. Her injuries are more serious uh, and we anticipate that uh, she will be in hospital for some, uh, some time yet. We ask for your support uh, in respecting her confidentiality and her anonymity. That's important to us if it's at all possible that her identity not be established. Uh, she's been through a lot and we seek your assistance in that regard. If in the fullness of time she chooses to talk to the media, well, that's fine, that will be her decision. But at this time we ask for your support in that regard. We also uh, am very grateful um, for the support of the media and the public so far that we seek and need your continued support and assistance. As I said, we have not yet identified the person who fired the shots. That's the critical part, obviously, of this investigation. And we ask anyone with any information, or even if they think or suspect that they may have some information, to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. And if you wish to remain anonymous, that is entirely uh, absolute that you can do that. Uh, or you can identify yourself and share that information with us. Uh, that's all I have at this stage. Uh, we're happy to take questions now. Um, and again, my thanks for uh, everyone's support in this matter. Be assured that we are doing everything we possibly can and we have a large team of uh, police and detectives working on this and we will continue to do so. The fact that you haven't identified the shooter yet, is there any indication that he's from outside Queensland and he's not from Gold Coast or Gold or Brighton Gang there? Uh, that of course is possible uh, and we need to keep an open mind to every possibility. Uh, that is uh, a part of the investigation and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to uh, comment in relation to that. What's um, the extra resources that the Minister was talking about this morning, extra 10 resources for Hydra, yeah. extra 10 on the Gold Coast, um, have, have you received those yet or how are you using the resources that are coming back? No, we, we are going to fast track the HR process. We'll start on that tomorrow. Um, all of those positions, because they're detec uh, detective positions, the 10 for Assistant Commissioner Rinders, 
um, for what will now be called the Major and Organised Crime Squad, which will have a focus on three streams, serious violent crime, major and organised crime and illegal firearm, uh, firearms activity and dealing. Um, and the other ten, of course, are going to Hydra, which is under Assistant Commissioner Condon's area. Uh, all of those are detective positions, so that means they have to be advertised in our police because it will fast track that process. We'll fast track as quickly as we can the selection of the 20 detectives uh, and their relocation and assignment to these new areas. Well, we're not in a position to comment on that at this stage. That's an ongoing part of the investigation. Obviously, all of those questions and questions of that nature are critically important in, in the investigation. But the priority at this stage is to identify him and establish his whereabouts. Premier Campbell Newman earlier today said that he would look at the possibility of um, using the association laws that the previous government introduced. Um, a request for an organisation to be declared has to come from you. Is that something you'll be doing? And can, can you tell us any specific bikey groups that you're looking at requesting a declaration on? Well, you're right. It is the police department that makes the application. But the legislation necessarily has aspects of confidentiality about it. And I'm not in a position to disclose to you at what point we are uh, in terms of our progression of activity in relation to that legislation. Uh, but I assure you uh, that we have not been sitting on our hands over that uh, and that we have been active in that space. But I'm not in a position, it would be improper for me to tell you exactly where we are now uh, and how far we may or may not be away from uh, taking action under the legislation. Groups you're looking no. At no, I'm sorry, I can't. If, if groups were already declared, would it help you in a situation like the one there that we're in, in that you would be able to detain the man that is in the hospital, for instance, and, and push yeah. him a bit further to talk? Look, look that's a, a very good question, but I'm sorry, but it's probably just a little bit too hypothetical for me to make a, a sensible and informed comment on. Um, but um, certainly, um, uh, I was obviously grateful to hear the Premier's comments today. And in terms, and I understand that the Premier also commented on the aspect of the government considering the unexplained wealth uh, perspective in terms of criminal activity. We were also very heartened um, that the Premier has taken that view and we, we will contribute uh, our view in terms of the Premier and the Police Minister and the Attorney General and the government's consideration of that uh, as soon as possible. Well, uh, that's part of our inquiries, and clearly you're right, there has been an escalation. We have seen a series of incidents in the space of less than a week, starting from last Tuesday. We are very concerned about that. Uh, the matter yesterday, of course, um, was uh, the worst case scenario, and that's where um, violence has occurred in a public space, such as a shopping centre, and a completely innocent person has been shot. I mean, even if that hadn't happened, the innocent woman being shot what happened was still absolutely and totally unacceptable to all of us. Um, but no, there has been, and um, we will do all we can to curb and prevent any repetition of such violence, and we will also do all we can to identify the people responsible and put them before the courts. Commissioner, the new, the new Mayor of the Gold Coast, Tom Tate, has been out this afternoon, and he's likened the bikies involved in this violence to urban terrorists, and he, he wants the federal police to potentially be involved in assisting Queensland police. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Uh, look, my conduct can comment further on that in a moment, but we already um, work uh, with the federal authorities. Um, he might expand on that as to the nature of those authorities. Yeah, look, we have a, a very strong partnership with uh, the law enforcement agencies. The reality is these are state-based defences, and uh, the Queensland Police Service and, and uh, legislation in this state have lead on it, uh, but we will be working closely with our uh, interstate partners, as we have been in the last uh, few days in relation to these current matters. Have the Federal Police been contacted about what's happened in the South East this week? Uh, not specifically, however, I have been talking to Federal agencies in, this morning to discuss uh, potential assistance from an intelligence point of view. Is there anything you can do about the man in hospital, hospital at the moment, can you detain him further or any, anything? Is there anything, any action at all that you can take? No, thank you for asking that question because it's a good point. We can't detain him. And, and again, uh, as we've mentioned previously, what this highlights is just 
the added level of difficulty associated with people who simply refuse to cooperate, uh, and especially with matters uh, of such an extreme and serious nature such as this. And, and that's, again, why we seek you know, the assistance of people who may be on the fringe of, of this activity, relatives or someone who might know these people who can help us. Given that he's already a target, though, and he's already been targeted, it, can you understand why he wouldn't want to talk to police and give further information? Well, I can understand the culture, uh, and that's been a long-held culture of outlaw motorcycle gangs, that, that they do not cooperate with the authorities and that they resolve these things between themselves. But that, to us, in my view, as a society, is unacceptable. We, should, we all live by the rule of law. That's the way our system works. And there is no place in our community for people who choose to step outside the rule of law. That's correct. We should not believe them at all, because they are not. And that is part of their clever marketing strategy to portray themselves as middle-aged people who simply have a love of, of motorbikes and are motorbike enthusiasts and pose no threat to society uh, and that the whole thing is a police beat-up. It's not. Uh, they're criminal enterprises. We have every reason to be fearful of them. They pose a serious threat to us. Um, and the more we can do to undo that false image, then the better that is. Yeah, absolutely, in recent times, yes. The only thing that would have made it worse if that woman who was shot had been more seriously injured. But it also comes in the context, doesn't it, of the, as you say, there's been the feds escalating, and in a sense yesterday wasn't an yeah. isolated incident. But I guess is that a... We've never had anything like this before in Queensland, have we? I'm not... Well, again, I agree. The incident yesterday, what happened yesterday, is clearly the worst thing that we have seen um, in this area, I mean, we've had terrible murders in Queensland, we've had multiple murders in Queensland, we've had some terrible crimes in Queensland, this occurs everywhere. But in terms of outlaw motorcycle gang nexus relationship, what happened yesterday is the worst thing that we've seen here for a very long time. But can I just add, in terms of, of, of your question, whilst there's clearly been an escalation, and we're not stepping away from that, in terms of those things that occurred last week and the series of them, leading up to yesterday, what we can't say to you, and we're not in a position to know at this stage if there's a definite link between each and every one of those incidents, okay? Prior to this, did police have enough resources to tackle the outlaw motorcycle gang problem? And have you asked for resources in the past from the previous government and been denied? The, the current government have committed to 1,100 extra police over four years. And the additional 20 detectives, whilst we're fast-tracking that, ultimately will come out of that extra allocation of police. So I'm grateful for that allocation. We certainly need it, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, and we, our job, our job is... It's not our job to be politicians. Uh, the three of us here are members of the senior executive of the service. Our job is to provide to you and to the people of Queensland the best policing service we can within the resources we have available to us, OK? That's what we do. We could always use more, and we're grateful for the additional police. And as you can see, um, as a priority, uh, we fast-tracked 10 into Graham Rinder's area on the Gold Coast and 10 into Mike Condon's area at State Crime. And that's the very first allocation of the extra police we're getting, and, and it has the highest priority. With the association laws, there have been concerns in other states, which is part of the reason they were deemed to be unconstitutional, that they, um, there would be political interference in which... Uh, mm gangs would be declared and, um, you know, that it, it impinged on, on civil liberties. Can you guarantee to Queenslanders that that won't happen here? Well, I hope concerns yeah. are justified. It's a good question and I certainly hope it won't. It is a matter of public record that the legislation uh, that was attempted in South Australia and New South Wales uh, was overturned or failed on appeal in the High Court of Australia. Uh, certainly it's our hope that the legislation here in Queensland um, is able to withstand any potential challenge in that regard. And is that because it's a decision that's made by the courts as opposed to a decision that's made by an Attorney General that's part of a political party? Uh, I don't fully understand the question. Well, the, the declaration here in Queensland is made by a court and yeah. a Supreme Court judge as opposed to the South Australian law, but, which was made by a... Yeah. That, that's probably a degree of detail that I won't get into at this stage, but certainly my understanding is that those involved in crafting the legislation here 
have been mindful of those other um, High Court issues and have endeavoured to craft legislation um, which um, will be able to withstand a High Court challenge. I think that at any time you can expect that there will be violence or tension between um, differing OMCGs and what we've seen the last week is that not only in the Gold Coast but certainly in Brisbane. Is, is it the uh, unfortunate reality that Queenslanders are going to have to perhaps get used to what we saw yesterday? No, no. In fact, what we would say to people is don't let this change your way of life. Um, what we ask people to do is to go about their business. Uh, now, for some that may be a big ask. We had four police in Rabuna Shopping Centre today. Uh, we actually didn't have any information or intelligence or think there'd be any problems there today, but that was just a show of our support for the community. But we cannot, in my view, we cannot let these people dictate to us how we're going to live our lives. And, and we cannot live a life differently and um, retreat into the safety of our own homes uh, because of the activities of these people. We must not let them change our way of life. My understanding is that uh, she was there by herself. She was there alone, yes. Um, has her spoken with her? How is she doing, apart from being physically injured? Mm. How, Can you comment on that? Yeah, she's doing quite well. She's uh, obviously got the comfort of friends and family at the moment, and uh, we have spoken to her. Yes. Would you be a concern for her, given that she, you know, in terms of identifying bikies, etc., would she, be, would she require for that? I did mention earlier that we asked that her confidentiality be respected. Um, we would hope that she is not at risk. Certainly she was a completely innocent victim. Um, but, and as I said, if she ultimately chooses to go to the media and tell her story to the media, that is entirely her business. But at this stage, it's our intention to keep her identity <coughs> confidential. Yeah, I might ask Mr Condon to comment on that. Uh, yes, so what I can say is that uh, Task Force Hydra detectives are constantly liaising with members of OMCGs. That has proven to be very fruitful in the past and uh, we will continue along that strategy in this current environment. Was there any tension last night between police and uh, the members who were attending the wedding in Portage Valley? Uh, we, not that I'm aware of, there may have been, but not that I'm aware of. Our, our priority, and we put, we already had a police plan and presence for that event. After the events at Rabini yesterday, we significantly ramped up in terms of that plan and presence. And one of our priorities last night was for that event to go, um, well, to conclude without any uh, injury or harm to anyone. Um, possibly the weather helped us as well. Uh, we'll probably not really know for sure, but um, we certainly um, got through that without any problem. I'm not aware of any complaints that have been received from anyone about uh, any of our actions last night. Have police identified what type of weapon was used in the shooting yesterday and have weapons been recovered yet? Yeah, I might just ask uh, my comment to comment on that. Uh, no weapons have uh, been recovered at this time and the, uh, it's not appropriate to comment on the calibre of the weapon. It's part of the investigation, I'm sure you understand. Is she under police guard? Uh, yeah, we have a police presence there, yeah, at the present time. Uh, the, the police presence is primarily while the person, the male person who was shot is there, though, if in oh, terms what? of... Oh, OK, what about for the lady? Yeah, that that is something we'll gauge and assess after he leaves the hospital, OK? Are they in the same uh, I, I don't know. I, I doubt that, but I don't know. I don't even know that they're at the same hospital. I'm not in a position to comment on that. Has there been any response to your appeal last night for people on the fringes of these groups to come forward and help police? We, we are heartened by the response that we've had. We're very grateful for the support of the media. and We asked, obviously, for your continued support. Um, uh, we're very grateful for the response we've had, but we need more information, and our appeal remains for people either who are relatives uh, or on the fringe to provide information to us through Crime Stoppers, and if they wish to re be anonymous when they do that, that is entirely possible. How many people have come forward so far? Yeah, look, again, that's part of the investigation. It's really important that people who are good enough to, to come forward, give information to us, give statements to us, uh, that we don't disclose the nature of that because it could lead to their identity. The man who's a victim in the hospital, was he previously with manager police? Oh, yes. 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 And then he was known as a member of the... 
is what we said yesterday and we reaffirmed today is that the, the male person who was shot yesterday has outlaw motorcycle gang connection. That's a great concern to me. Uh, and we will do all we can to prevent that happening, and we will do all we can to identify the people responsible for these various matters that have occurred in less than a week starting on last Tuesday at Mermaid Beach on the Gold Coast, prosecute those people and put them before the courts. How hard is it, once these situations sort of like that, this one appears to get ahead of steam, how hard is it to stop them? Obviously, we've had outlaw motorcycle gangs in Queensland and Australia for a very long time, and violence um, between them and by them is not uncommon. You only have to look at events that have occurred over time, of course, to see that. Um, the code of silence that they practice, um, their engagement of top-flight criminal lawyers who they retain and are available for them quickly, um, the fact uh, how they cleverly market themselves, all of these things, uh, and their total lack of cooperation, of course, and their code of silence, all of these things add to the d degree of difficulty for police uh, in dealing with them. Yeah, I might just ask uh, Mr. Condon and Mr. Reinders to comment on that. If that's uh, it, it's a, it's a, an interesting question, uh, but did you want to go first? Yeah, across uh, Queensland, we have about 14 uh, groups of OMCGs, and in some of those uh, groups, we are seeing uh, Middle Eastern men joining those. Uh, OMCGs. Uh, we constantly monitor the process of uh, the uh, gangs taking those sort of people on. We're talking to our interstate counterparts to get a real feel as to what that means in relation to our space in Queensland. But certainly we've been monitoring that for a long time. Are they generally the gangs that have closer links to, to other southern gangs? Well, well, bearing in mind that some of the gangs are at a national level, uh, so that would be an automatic process. Well, it means that there are individuals out there who believe that this way of life is the right thing for them. Clearly, they're out of sync with the rest of the community. And uh, the reality is, uh, over many decades, we have seen activities involving outlaw motorcycle gangs that involve serious crimes. We, as an organisation, have been able to successfully investigate and prosecute numerous offenders, and in particular Hydra, since its inception in 2007, over a thousand offenders for, and associates uh, charged with uh, over 2,800 charges involving uh, attempted murder, extortion, firearms offences, drug-related offences. Those people have been sentenced to lengthy terms of imprisonment. What we're seeing here is a spike of tension between the two groups. We've seen it before. Uh, we are well placed uh, to carry it out the investigations and get on top of it. It is a difficult process, make no mistake. The code of silence is difficult to break. I was a commander of Task Force uh, Syntax in involving an, an outlaw motorcycle gang involved in multiple uh, people involved in murder. We got on top of that. I'm confident we'll do that. the same. Who are those two groups? Sorry? Who are those two groups? The two groups involved in Syntax. Oh, with the, the big you know, close to attention that you just said. Uh, at this stage, we're not prepared to make comment on who those groups are. Uh, in the southeast corner, I would say that's a fair comment. Uh, we have nine uh, different groups from sort of Brisbane through to the Gold Coast. And certainly, just in response as well to your question, um, it's quite possible uh, that in terms of that series of events that have occurred since Tuesday, that more than two outlaw motorcycle groups are involved in that. In fact, that's more likely than not. Um, did you want to add to any of that comment? No, I think what we're seeing in terms of the uh, bikey demographic, and you spoke about it before, I think there's, a, there's attempts by them to legitimise themselves in the eyes of the public. The traditional um, long beard, long hair is going, and we're seeing more like a, a younger set with, that are well-groomed, well-presented, and try to portray themselves as uh, professional people that are sort of infiltrating those gangs. I guess the move to um, businesses as well 
albeit tattoo parlours uh, and, um, and, and other business enterprises, is, is another step on that journey also. All right, any... Will you be targeting those premises you talked about before looking at the, the wealth of these groups? Yeah. Some of these businesses, tattoo parlours, locksmiths that have been targeted, will you actually be taking a close look at those businesses as well? Yeah, look, look certainly uh, I think that that aspect of pursuing the, the, the proceeds of illegal activity through you know, potentially unexplained wealth legislation is a really important and potentially valuable avenue. Now, ultimately, whether that occurs or not will be a matter for the government. You know, um, We certainly would um, provide advice, and I'm sure that our advice would be considered ultimately to be a matter for government. But somehow um, we have to, in my view, um, disadvantage them and uh, take away, I guess, the motive and um, the, um, the economic aspect of, of their activities. Uh, and if we can do that through unexplained wealth legislation, then I think that would be a very good thing and a very good way to uh, to impact them. Is this the, the escalation in tension in South East Queensland the past week or so, is that a local one or is that connected nationally? I'm referring there, I guess, to the increase in drop by shootings in Sydney, that sort of thing. Is, the, is that spilling over into Queensland? You, you know, again, that's a very good question and it's, uh, aspects of that um, we simply can't rule out as possible. Um, uh, and as I said earlier, um, clearly if you took all of the events that have occurred since last Tuesday, it, it may well be that there's a connection between some, but not necessarily all, and the escalation wasn't one thing after the other. And it may well be that there is some connection in the state, um, but we're not in a position to um, fully know that uh, clearly at this point in time. From your knowledge, um, from your knowledge, are there members within these clubs or gangs that aren't involved in illegal activity, that are just associated with them and are members because maybe someone in their family is a member and they've joined up through that, or, mm. or are they all involved in illegal activity? I'll ask Mr Condon to comment. <coughs> Generally speaking, we think that of the 14 gangs that exist in Queensland, um, there's probably a breakdown in that space. Uh, do you mind commenting a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's our belief that the um, top three or four that which we believe to be high risk to the community are all engaged at some level in criminal activity sanctioned by the club. So if, even if they're not directly involved in it, they're co-conspirators, I guess, if you like? They're, they're I guess what we're saying here is that, that for those higher level groups that pose the greatest risk to our community, uh, they're organised, it's sanctioned by the club, um, and um, people are aware uh, of that activity. And again, the code of silence comes into play there. Yeah, can we... Do, I probably won't go into that detail at this stage. Uh, perhaps that's something for some further time. While we're in the midst of this investigation, we'd probably, you know, just like to stay um, away from identifying particular groups yeah, at this time. Yeah, without being specific, but I guess in terms of what I was asking before, those top three or four ones which are the most at risk, they're part of national... Are they part of national... Uh, all of those have uh, interests in other states' territories. Is there much scope for um, you know, the fight against my attention in terms of the threat of what happened yesterday, given that you know, we may see some action from political leaders or whatever that helps you guys do what you need to do? Yeah, I, OK. I, I hope they regret it because I hope that uh, what we're able to do is, um, you know, is... is um, is um, will dismantle them ultimately and certainly uh, in the interim um, prosecute them successfully and as Mike Condon said we've had great success with Hydra in doing that since uh, 2009. Um, I, I think um, their only regret uh, might be the uh, the focus of attention that they're, they're likely to receive. Mm. Well, only time will tell. Did you want to add to that at all? Well, I, from my view is, uh, in, from previous experience, that's exactly what occurs. Um, when the incident occurs, it's it's a, almost a competition of who's the uh, uh, the toughest between the two groups. And then when it all falls over and reality hits home, there is regret that the incident occurred. They normally don't have any uh, concerns for the victims, but they certainly understand that it brings attention to bear from law enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. And, and the regret would simply be that it might uh, hinder 
their illegal activities, their profit-making activities, and cost them money and legal fees. That would be the only regret. There's no sense of any moral compass or, or conscience for these people. Commissioner, yesterday you, you suggested that charities and legitimate businesses should cut off all ties to, to motorcycle groups in Queensland. Has there been any indication today that, that there's been a response to that? No, and look, I'm not... Uh, you know, I mean, my job is to be your police commissioner, uh, and, and I'm not, you know, the guardian of Queensland's uh, morals and values and, and that, but you ask me a question, I'll answer it as best I can. And, and my point was made in the context of the clever marketing they utilise, uh, and what I asked was that... Uh, what I was particularly referring to yesterday was what's called the poker runs, and that's where they have a motorcycle ride from point A to point B, and they encourage members of the community to join with them on that ride, and they get great publicity about that, as you could imagine, with hundreds and hundreds, if not more, motorcycles and people, you know, engaging. What I'm asking is that people not engage with them and, and step back from them completely and disassociate themselves from any involvement or engagement. Commissioner, just quickly, have there been any developments in the banking training process? Yeah, I might uh, ask uh, Mike Condon to uh, talk about that. Thanks. Uh, thank you. The uh, investigators continue to work with uh, members of the family. Uh, our search uh, continues and uh, we remain uh, confident that uh, we are working towards uh, a resolution. Is it normal for a, the spouse of a missing person to spend an hour in a police station a week after this appearance? Well, uh, we continue to engage the family. I would expect that uh, that would happen all the time. It's nothing new. Well, uh, anything else? Uh, anything else? I uh, really appreciate your time and your support on this um, and uh, we'll obviously keep you advised um, and we will be available every day if you wish um, uh, to, um, to go over this uh, and we'd be particularly grateful of course if you're able to publish uh, those, five, um, uh, those five photos. Thanks again. Thank you.